Hey everyone, today's topic, what it's like learning Japanese both in your original country and then in Japan. And today's interviewee is Rommel. And I believe your name is Rommel, sorry. It's been almost a year I've been sitting on this interview and I know how your name is written. I just, I don't know, I'm so horrible with pronunciations. Um, but anyways, Rommel started off in San Diego, studied there, went to Japan, went back to San Diego, went back to Japan and is working in Japan currently. And here's the story. And oh yeah, before I forget, this is part four now of a series about learning Japanese in Japan. You can watch the other three by looking at the links in the description below. And the last one will be with me. That'll be coming later. Okay, now to Rommel. My first question, why study Japanese? Yeah, so that's, that's quite a long story. The short answer is um, I, I was watching anime in my university years and felt like, you know, it'd be nice to be able to watch this stuff without reading the subtitles and kind of understand some of the cultural references, things like that. And um, so I started taking just language courses in my spare time um, at night, actually, and studying a little bit um, at the local universities. While in the U.S., I wanted to know if he was able to speak to people in Japanese. I, I did have like friends, uh, fr friends and like language exchange partners. It, it was kind of a battle, uh, to be honest. So Japanese people, when they're abroad, w really are interested in speaking English. And here I am wanting to practice Japanese or at least learn something. I felt like it was more uh, explaining American culture to uh, a Japanese person than me actually learning something about Japanese language or uh, anything related to the culture. Of course, they would try to kind of like teach me things like one of the key topics was like uh, okonomiyaki, for example. I just had no concept of what it was. Um, I didn't have any experience and I just have to nod my head and kind of imagine what it could possibly be. They would always, you know, make a comment like this is like, you know, this kind of ramen is so delicious. And to me, my vision of ramen is just, you know, the those cup noodle ramens. <laughs> Um, which is not the same, obviously, if you've had actual ramen. He went on to tell me that learning Japanese is not only about the language. The struggle was really not just on a language basis, but also culturally. Um, it was really hard to build a context for what they were talking about. And, and I, I kind of experienced that now, too, after spending so much time here in Japan, like just telling friends and family about certain th aspects of my life here is, is some things just don't kind of translate. <laughs> he went on to move to Japan, so I asked what prompted him to do so. I got to pretty much a, a ceiling, we'll call it, of how much I could study outside of Japan. And the only way to keep going was to pretty much come here and study in Japan and experience all of it. Spending my entire life in San Diego was it, it was good, just um, I, I felt like something was missing as far as my interests. Um, and my first trip to Tokyo, I was kind of blown away, well, Japan in general. To live in Japan, it does help to know Japanese, so I wanted to know his level of Japanese before the move. I had taken um, pretty much all of the available beginner courses available, at least in my city. And uh, so that was, that included basically all of the Genki books, both one and two. Leaving the States, I, I felt like I was somewhere just beyond the intermediate level. At least that was my feeling. That didn't turn out to be the case, actually. So um, I was actually placed uh, uh, at the very end of the beginner level. I did argue with them a little bit, actually. Uh, why I, was, I was a little confused, like, why am I starting off in the beginner level? I'm going to be reviewing a lot of material. Um, but the pace was quite fast, so um, it, it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise. I mean, I, I admit that they're kind of right in, in the placement because um, some of the concepts I learned outside were um, a little rough on the edges, we'll say. My next question was about his Japanese language school experience. The school doesn't exactly force you to get a perfect score, we'll say. So there are many students that would just kind of just do the bare minimum. Um, uh, but 
this was on my own dime, so I've had a vested interest of actually making every dollar count. <laughs> so I, I, I took it pretty seriously, and um, uh, the other benefit was that some of the material was, was review, and so uh, I wasn't spending so much of my time just like in the books and studying. Uh, I had a little bit of time to kind of adjust to my surroundings in Japan um, and kind of build some, I don't know, friendships at least. I mean, to be honest, it's not just the class, but also being able to be submersed um, outside of class was also an aspect to it. So uh, when you do learn something as basic, uh, in, in the basic grammar level, and you can go out and apply it, um, that's a world of difference compared to just passing a test and then not using it ever again. And so when you do make that jump to intermediate, now you're using some really advanced grammar, well not advanced, intermediate grammar, um, that will come up pretty often, we'll say a third of the time, but um, it, it's, you know, the, the other majority of the time you, you could have just used simple grammar and not had to like stress so much about all these complex expressions. I then asked about his out-of-school experience. The friends really helped with uh, conversational Japanese or casual Japanese, and they didn't help much with the formal Japanese, actually. The school really helps with the formal Japanese. When I was working, I wasn't working in a Japanese environment, so I was still going back to using English and things like that. And so uh, the I noticed that the students that uh, were completely immersed. We're making quite a bit more progress than I was, um, especially the students that were uh, working part-time. If anything, their listening capability was like uh, growing very quickly because they were actually in an environment where they had to use Japanese. Like even if it was the same Japanese over and over again, it was just the act of using it was helping. Uh, whereas I would go back to my room and get back on the computer to do some work and it wasn't really applying the Japanese. The next question was what it was like to do everyday life things in Japanese. You get like kind of a hands-on experience of uh, wading your way through all of the jargon and um, how people actually use the language or how they don't use the language and how the books tell you they use language. Um, so it helped and it didn't help. So it's like. Is a huge confidence like killer, <laughs> we'll say, just uh, trying to even get something ordered and then um, you eventually find your way and um, and then you 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 kind of get into deeper conversations or people start noticing you're coming more often and will like kind of get you you'll, you'll get into like some small talk and. Uh, that connection with people like helps also because you know, th often the, their English capability won't be that great and so they'll just keep using Japanese on you and and you have to find your way like you can't really um, you don't have a book that you can just go like reference or a teacher that will like kind of guide you along it's more like like <laughs> sink or swim kind of a deal I think just being forced to use it is uh, it's, uh, how do I say, it's, <laughs> it's like uh, being forced to eat your vegetables, I guess. <laughs> uh, you don't want to do it, but in the end it's going to benefit you. He went to school for a year, so I wanted to know how his Japanese was after that time. The level of Japanese I had at that time was where I had wanted to be uh, starting out, so I could have a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a Japanese person. I still struggle with certain concepts, like um, very technical concepts were still really tough for me, but I, I could always find a way around it of like just either describing what I wanted or getting, you know, whoever was listening to kind of help me um, find the right expression. My next inquiry was why he quit Japanese school when he did. I'm not exactly young anymore, so I couldn't totally put my career on hold. Um, in my situation, uh, being a seasoned like uh, software engineer for, for a number of years, 
um, putting my career on hold for more than a year was going to start having an impact on, on my ability to get back into the industry. While talking, he had some interesting insights about advanced grammar that I'll let him share with you. The funny thing about advanced grammar is that you get to these really esoteric, like, grammar concepts that normal Japanese people don't even, like, use on a day-to-day -day basis or use naturally. They don't really understand how to explain it. <laughs> Not only are you learning something you know for sure, you probably won't use much, if at all, in the future. Um, no one can really explain it to you. It's, it's kind of, you're really on your own for sure at that point. <laughs> um, and so that kind of really kills all the motivation. Like, you know, if I'm, not, if I'm never going to use it and I just want to pass like N1, then what's the point? Is what it really comes down to. In the end, he talked about what I think most language learners want. I just want to be able to communicate with people. I don't have to read, I don't have to write. I just want to be able to have a nice, like one-on-one -on -one conversation and when you get into nitty-gritty it's uh, it's really complicated <laughs> and the road there is not exactly easy for some people they, they're natural like language learners they just pick up things really quickly or they come from a background where uh, Japanese isn't so foreign uh, for example if you have a Korean background um, a lot of the words in Japanese sound somewhat similar to the Korean words and the grammar structure is somewhat similar, so you kind of have a, an edge. Or if you come from either a Chinese or Taiwanese background, you can already read kanji. Um, but being an, uh, you know, uh, uh, an American and growing up in America and only being able to speak and understand English, like, uh, it, it's literally starting from the very beginning uh, being what I tell people is like, it's like starting from being illiterate and learning how to read and write all over again. Another little fascinating thing we talked about was having a significant other that speaks Japanese. Even back in the States, like um, a lot of my friends that are in that situation, like um, usually their spouse will get to a point where their English is just like, like perfect, not 100% perfect, but way better than um, an American's Japanese level and so again it, it's like a kind of a losing battle if you're not actively using it and you're only getting one source of input it's it's really it's really tough. So Rommel did return to San Diego where he found it was more like treading water so he was not really progressing he was just kind of staying afloat by studying um, but when I interviewed him he was back in Japan again, so I asked him about his kind of everyday Japanese interactions and language use. Now that I've been living here again, um, I only really write my address. <laughs> Funny thing is I don't speak much Japanese at work, uh, even though I, I spent a year studying it. So. <laughs> yeah, I can completely understand. Unless you're forced to use the language, whether it's in a Japanese workplace or in a Japanese, uh, I don't know, school system or even at home, it's sometimes you don't need to use it that much to get by in Japan. Um, but my story is for next time. Uh, for all of you, as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side. And today's question is, if you've went abroad to study and then came back to your country, how did it go maintaining or improving your language skills?